Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't gonna ever let it go. Why not? I? Why would I let it go? Because <laughs> you know what it does to your stomach, but I can't say nothing. Because exactly. I'm so silly. be quiet. I'm about to say, yeah, you, you got you, just yours with regular food. But Ross does it all year. Yes. Yeah, I ain't spicy. You food don't never let cool. your stomach make it. Me, I do. I give my stomach a break. A full year. Yeah, it's Until not you get to Christmas. Well, yeah. November, December. Until November, so November like, two months. You give it like but 10 months. But with two months, yeah. you go in, though. Yeah, he does. I'll go in. How many bottles have you drinking of the eggnog? So this is just my second. Mm-hmm. You know what? And it's these size. We haven't even got the uh, half gallon one yet. <laughs> God damn. The half gallon. I still yeah. haven't tried the eggnog yet. You, you haven't should. tried it? Mm-mm. It's I not tried, bad. I haven't tried it. It's not bad. All right. It's one of them Christmas things, man. Like just yeah. the theme. The I don't feel. think my mom ever was really into the. Well, I didn't really drink like too much dairy products back then. Yeah, so. I mean, I didn't have eggnog mm-hmm. probably until like what maybe high school, middle school, high school. Mm-hmm. They put uh, people put like alcohol in it. Yeah, I know that. Um, yeah. I heard they said that uh, putting Crown in it is really good. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll try that. Because mm. it's so. Mm-hmm. Rich, yeah, that, <laughs> get rich. Yeah. You know it is. So when you put the alcohol flavor, it gives it a little, yeah, yeah. it gives it a little kick. Oh, yeah. Okay, well I gotta try. I've never tried it. This yeah. probably be the first. That's year. like a good fight. What? Uh, crown and I mean alcohol and eggnog. That's a good fight. Yeah, I thought you because normally put flavors. alcohol in your. Uh, Me no. no. Oh, so you just drink it straight. straight. I don't drink it with oh, alcohol. Because I, I was wondering, I was like, damn, this nigga infatuated with it. He, he loves. So you thought I was drinking, drinking? No, not drinking, drinking. I thought you would put like a little bit. Eggnog. Mm-hmm. If he put alcohol with it, he would be drunk all day. <laughs> <laughs> during the, during the holiday season, yeah. Well, at least the holiday season. That's yeah. why I always thought you was putting like a little bit of alcohol. in no. I didn't know. I was just drinking it straight. Oh, okay. Yeah, straight shooter. Straight <laughs> shooter. All right. Yeah, yeah anywho. Ladies and that. gentlemen, <laughs> thank you guys for straight shooting. Uh pun in, no pun intended. Ben uh da, 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 da. episode ninety five. Um <laughs> glad to be here. Feels good to be here. How are everybody doing? Doing pretty good, man. Had you a came good... in full Texans gear. Yeah, of course. We had a great Sunday, man. Yeah. Shout out Phenomenal. Shout out to the Texans, man. Mm-hmm. It feels so good. To it be able good. to say we have a we got one a franchise quarterback, even <laughs> though we had one, it's yeah. just the coaching was off, and then he had his off field issues. We're not yeah. going to talk about that. It's been talked <laughs> to death, but we have a good coach in D'Amico Ryan. Kinks out, and we have good offensive coordinator, and mm-hmm. we have C.J. Stroud, who one he's they you know the team appointed him as the team captain you know they didn't have to do that because yeah, he was yeah. the you know the number one pick for you know well yeah the pick for the Texans they didn't have to do that mm-hmm. but they you know the team rallied behind him and he seemed like he cares about the you know the game and he gives a focused. damn about winning man yeah, yeah he, he, cares he cares about that legitimately it's not a <clears throat> doesn't seem like a front or acting mm-hmm. to see what he did out there with 40 like I think it was like 45 seconds left Two timeouts and the yeah. way he got us back down the field for us to win the game. Yeah, it was it was phenomenal to see, man. He got a lot of people hyped. Yes. Um, but I mean, people have been saying that even throughout the first struggle games that yeah, we were course. having. They were just noticing how poised he was and mm-hmm. how, you know, the once the old line just gave him a chance, he would, you know, be able to be more effective. And um, I'm just happy to see what what's yeah. going on right now. I'm excited. Um, it's cool to say you're excited about the Texans. Yeah, it's been a minute since we can say that. And I think our sports in Houston is coming around. Like the for sure, baseball already got it there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the Rockets seem like they're figuring out some pieces, trying to get it together. They, they're yeah. trying to get it. To, they still gelling. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Texans as well. It's not just a complete. Yeah. The whole city just garbage. Yeah, it's, it's it's something you can actually go watch. And for the longest, Astros have been holding it down. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't even. Uh, yeah, I would have loved for us to go to the World Series for sure. Or whatnot, for sure. But at the end of the day. I mean, I wouldn't like heard about it. I was like, oh, yeah, damn. Yeah. We, we'll we made to... it. We made it right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to the Rangers uh, for yeah. going up there and doing y'all thing. We're not mm-hmm. sore losers. Uh, no. Y'all, y'all fought hard. And, and y'all took y'all care deserved, of business, bro. Yeah. Y'all took care of business. So I can't If everything can't get was mad done about it. legally. <laughs> Here we go. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm, <laughs> They be on our neck, you this know. Just true. wanted to make sure this if, is if everything was done how it was supposed to. This is you this know. is this is very true, man. So nah, it's just that's why I had to put on the Texas merch because nah, I'm that. just um. It feels good mm-hmm. to say we marvelous. We have a potential future, and I would I would love to be able to 
experience a Texan Super Bowl in that'd be time lit. in my lifetime, bro. That I'm good. We turn it up, bro. Oh, I'm what? talking about the turn up. Oh my god. <laughs> That's the turn up would be real. You might what? catch us live streaming out. Oh, for the parade. Show, bro. I, I, that's that's has always been something, and obviously, you know, maybe the Rockets getting back to it. Oh, for one sure. More time because we was little when that happened. So, but it's like at least it happened before yeah, Texans. Yeah, that yeah, would yeah, be the first one. So mm-hmm. we would never happen. Lit. Yeah, we would. We first would time ever. Like, yeah, no, nah, yeah. we're the youngest team <clears throat> in the NFL. Like yeah. the youngest franchise the in babies. the NFL. So, oh, okay. yeah, we never won a Super Bowl. Never so. won a Super Bowl. I think they were creating O2. So when oh, we do they were just created. Yeah. When we do, boy. Mm-hmm. Cause we boy, oh boy. Cause we, you know, we originally it was the Houston Oilers, but then mm-hmm. um they ended up moving Tennessee. to Tennessee because <laughs> at the time uh they didn't want the owner of the Oilers wanted them to make a stadium because we was just playing in the Astrodome, same place where the Astros were playing, but that building's old. Mm. It's old. It was old then when they were requesting for it. Then the city never did it, so he said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna just move to Tennessee." And Tennessee, you moved to Tennessee, and they went from there. So that's why we end up losing a team, but we did have one, the Houston Oilers. And for a minute, we didn't have one, and then finally, when they built uh, Reliant or whatnot, then that's when uh, we ended up with the Texans. So, mm-hmm. oh, that's what's up. Mm-hmm. A little bit of Houston history for those who don't know. Oh yeah, no, for sure, man. Yeah, I was just looking at uh, mm-hmm. man, the the breakdown that they had with the last few seconds of him getting that ball into the tank, man, it was just that, bro, that was... shout out to the homie Steve. He wasn't able to make it again today. Uh, mm-hmm. He, you know, work schedule and stuff like that. Scheduling is just kind of mm-hmm. uh, interfering, but he's definitely um gonna be back man he's still a part of the the, the team but uh he was actually at the game yeah he was and i seen him do the reaction of when mm-hmm. they scored and of course you can't control no moment like that so yeah it was dope that he got to see that in person yeah, i think he, he brought his son for his first game mm-hmm. that was that was that was <coughs> cool yeah, man so major. yeah man so it, it just feels good that's why i'm in a great mood man. yeah and then Fantastic. not only that today my is my oh mm-hmm. my baby today mm-hmm. is her birthday our oldest daughter Mariah mm-hmm. ten year old yeah ten year old man we happy a, birthday to a, Mariah got a decade old kid in the building man that's and then, wild then Isaiah's birthday is right around the corner <laughs> son's birthday is four days after hers yeah so November sixth and tenth yeah we mm-hmm. can be real lit around that time in October yeah. would we'll, we'll do the man so. Shout out to them, man. Love, yeah. love the kids. Enjoy the weekend, the birthday party, and all that. Oh, yeah. Did an art party. Time. It was nice. Yeah, yeah. he should be doing a thing. Yeah, Mariah, man, she she banking, man. Yeah, she, she was in that cut. Yeah, bro, she was getting all kind of money on her uh, in them cars. Yeah, that's I'm how like, you man, do it. Hold man. on, fam. She just in there. Oh, every yeah. time a twenty or something pop out, she was just lit. Yeah, man. And shout out to y'all for actually doing this. I. I thought it was going to be a little bit longer, but... We pulled the plug. Y'all pulled, pulled the, the plug, plug. We got, we got her cell phone. Yeah. Man, got that, her phone. Got her that phone. and I know I've been around Mariah for so long. She's been asking for a phone. Yeah, it's so been a while. So when she finally got it, I know that was happy for her. And, yeah, and I, what you said, you know, which I think she'll be fine. She's responsible oh, enough. Sure. You know, she's going to make sure she, you know, does what she has to do and, you know... Take care of it, so mm-hmm. I, I think y'all will be fine on that front because that's yeah. this is something she's been wanting for a while, and yeah, yeah, and for it's sure. and it's one of those things where you know it it, it did, depends on the parenting, mm-hmm. but you know if we live in that time period where it's like you know what kids can be, I guess uh, what they can see exposed get exposed to, mm-hmm. you kind of got to be careful with that, yeah. but also you got to also know your kids as well and that's and how part. you how you bring them up and how you allow them to understand like don't be pressured into doing certain things because mm-hmm. everyone else is doing it yeah you may see it but that don't mean you need to do it either you know right. what I'm saying? and then we, we we you know pride ourselves uh on very much communication yeah, yeah communicating yeah, yeah. letting them know that hey we here this is, this is what it is ask me mm-hmm. i'll never get mad if you come and ask me um <laughs> yeah. always be honest you know, I want to be able to trust you. Yeah, I cannot trust you too. I don't care if you're my kid. Yeah, you know, like I uh, that's the things I tell them. But I I give them the reality of the world, like mm-hmm. in pieces. Mm-hmm. I've always told them is you're gonna learn things, and I'm gonna be able to expose more things to you in stages. Yeah. If I was to tell my youngest, I always tell them if I used to tell if I would tell my youngest son Josiah something that you understand. Do you think he gonna know what we talk about? And they're like, no. Like, why not? Because he's too young. Same for you. Mm-hmm. We don't have certain conversations with you that we do with adults. 
because it, it's not, it hasn't crossed your mind yet. It, mm -hmm. they don't, you know, that doesn't came to you yet. When you hit those crossroads, then we can start having them conversations. But mm -hmm. she'll be going to middle school in a couple of years. So she'll be able to start seeing the social construct. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like fifth grade up to like that, you know, eighth grade, they start to develop, they start to experience different people yep. that are also, you know, growing up in these spaces in school and you have to deal with different personalities, different moods, mm -hmm. kind of realize who you like to be around with, who you don't. You know, you start to develop as a kid, you know, and that innocence, Lord knows, I, I hate it. That's, that's what made me cry when she was born. It wasn't the fact that, oh, you just have, it's like, man, just innocence yeah. yeah, in its rawest form, just like, like my youngest baby right now, just pure, she's pure innocence. So we know <laughs> growing yeah. up, going to Dowling, yeah. Innocence start to just get wiped off. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. start dealing with niggas, mm -hmm. you know, and that's that's any race. Just saying, just in ignorance in general. You just kind of feel like, damn, I'm here now. This is what this is? Is mm -hmm. this the world? And then, you know, you start to kind of, you know, them, them innocent blockers get knocked off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a part of life, you know. <laughs> we all got to go through it. Yeah, we all got to go through it. So that's why it's good to have, you know, good parenting to, you know, be able to help kids navigate that when they do get to those situations where they can't ask mm -hmm. you or ask and shit. It's like, they got to now kind of figure it out on their own Facts. until they get back to you. you know? Yeah, so. for sure. Shout out to Nisha too. Mm -hmm. Incredible mom. She pulled the plug. Yeah. yeah. She the one that, uh, <laughs> she decorated the whole event. People mm -hmm. loved it. It was an art party, like uh, I was saying before. Mm -hmm. She's into a lot of the arts and craft uh, type things. She draws. She likes to create things, put things together. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get her um mm -hmm. Lego set. It's a Lego set she's been asking for since we oh, did okay. our first one. Oh, um, okay, okay, she's okay. Like, yeah, I want to do one, and I want to do it myself. All I'm right, like, okay. I said, go ahead with your bad self. I said, don't don't rain on my parade. <laughs> I did it as a family thing, but right, I want to nah. do it on my own. I don't need y'all help. Nah, I love that, but nah, shout out, shout out to uh, shout out to Nisha and good parenting. We can oh, yeah. we can pat I mean, our we, we, we can talk our stuff I mean, right today. We both are great parents, you know. Like I don't think it's just one of us. We are both together, and I think that's what makes a relationship. And for kids to see that, mm -hmm. and in one household is also good for them as well. For like, sure. She the thing she wants. So the reason why we have so much trust in her is because she sees us. And mm -hmm. not only in one household, but just our parents. Period. Because it's a lot of people in different households mm -hmm. that, that parent. parent amazing. Yeah, they do. Like they are, like from what you were saying, like mm -hmm. your story, like, you know, hearing Raw's story reminded me of like almost, in a way, like Will's, well, oh. terrible oh. example, yeah. but at the time, yeah, at the time, what it looked like with yeah. Jada and then his ex, mm -hmm. the first child. Mm -hmm. But nah, in your story, like <clears throat> being able to have your mom call your stepmom and they have a relationship mm -hmm. and because it's like at the end of the day it's all about the child i know we may have our differences mm -hmm. that i feel like that's a, that should be the same way uh -huh. and that's i'm not trying to shoot a shot at nobody tr promise you but that's just like with kids if me and you ain't vibing no more my children shouldn't be affected yeah. by that like yeah, if i'm should. if i'm have a relationship with your children as even as friends i still want to keep that relationship yeah with your child i think that's something cool yeah yeah um, cause sometimes when people get into it, it's like, oh, fuck you and them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. it's like, now the kids ain't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. they ain't at an age where they can understand mm -hmm. why we feuding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, let yeah. me still send so and so something, or let mm -hmm. me still show love to little man, cause, you know, they were used to seeing me for yeah, so long. Yeah, 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 for sure. You know, so I feel like that's a thing, too. Of course. As it should be. But I said I wasn't shooting, you know, cause people could probably take that oh, out. Oh, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like if the shoe fits, you know, we're not gonna sit here and keep. Yeah baby find people's lifestyles like if that's not yeah, your lifestyle sure. or you feel a certain kind of way about it nothing's geared towards anybody so i mean right. it is what it is so i mean hey it is what it is like i said in a household mm, if I your child that. is raised right no matter where you live at <laughs> your child is going to be set in a certain way that's just what it is they don't yeah. they, they only do what they see and that's a yeah. quote you've always told me and they see what they do so and that's just what it is. Like a child is gonna, you can be a parent oh that gosh. is just not right, flat out just trifling, mm -hmm. not doing what you need to do as a parent, not listening to your child, and then you can talk a good talk, but your child is only gonna do what they see. Speaking mm -hmm. of talk, when, when do y'all think is the appropriate age for the talk? Ooh, man, I'm not ready. Or did, oh, you know what? Let me rephrase. When did y'all get the talk? I never got the talk. Okay, you. really? Mm -mm. You? I, not really. I, I'm like, I, I got a. 
I'll tell you the talk I got, but I ain't, I'm going to okay. go last. So I got the talk mm. when I was in middle school. Okay. Because um, my brother. Titties is, was getting big? No. Okay. I, first of all, what are you talking about? <laughs> I didn't even have breast. No, nah, when you start, de- you know, school. when you start developing. Like, oh, we got to sit this one down. First of all, I was a soul developer. But we're not going to go there. Okay. So Thank anyway, um, my, my brother came home with a letter, a note from school one day. And he was in. Um, no, this is how it started. Like oh, okay, the talk. Okay. Hmm. So we were all at home one day. And my mom, she kept thinking we were all too young for it. Mm. But one day, a, a teacher intervened a letter between him and a little girl. Date, time, Yeah, you song. know those letters that had date, times. Uh, yeah, yeah. So thinking the about girl it. was talking about how she wanted to do all type of things to him mm. in the letter. In middle school? In middle school. Sounds about right. So you hear my mom tell the <laughs> yeah, story? She told the story right. before. Has she? Yeah. Anyway, so the teacher found the note. And the teacher thought it was so explicit. Oh, that wow. she had to call my mom. Damn. Why your mom? She a hater for one because no, she you, not a hater. She's being a teacher. <laughs> she should have called that girl. So mom. if if your daughter gets a letter like that from a little boy and the teacher gets it, you don't want the teacher to call you. Yeah, but I want you. See to how make I flip. Sure. It is okay no, when it's your daughter. But... I didn't say don't call me, but I'm saying oh, no, the the main this gonna go on a mission. <laughs> so right. I don't know. I ain't finna that's... say what I'm finna do yeah, on camera. See, that's yeah, I'm not that's doing why I was like, I don't but, know. Uh... Call the parent. Make sure you go in on the person who sent the that parent, that kid who sent the letter. You got to call that parent. Okay, and that may be true, but all I'm saying is the teacher called, <clears throat> and when the okay. teacher called, mm-hmm. it was like I'm gonna suck this. All the whoa. stuff that she was like, "Whoa, they're That's in wild. middle school, and these little girls are saying these things," you know. Mm-hmm. So she felt she... like as soon as we came home, she was like, she talked to him about the letter, and she was like, "This is not your fault, but I, this is not you're not supposed to be doing this at this age." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so she then she got the little broom. Put the condom on the broom. Oh, so y'all got to y'all got to talk in based off of one kid because yeah. she Nobody. felt like at the time, okay, well we y'all all need enough. to we all need to sit down and just I'm not gonna do it with one kid. I'm gonna do it with everybody. Yeah, okay. We're like my brother. That one of my brothers in high school. We're in middle school. So, so I'm, I'm kind of confused. <laughs> How are you confused? <laughs> because she got a broom. To teach, was she teaching both of y'all how to put a condom on? Or no, she was teaching the boys. So, and you was just there. Yeah, like we. So you're learning too. She to how to start, put a condom on. Are the guys need to put one on for me when we're in a situation? I'm, I have so many questions, <laughs> but I ain't even gonna expose your family. I'm gonna just. Anyway, <laughs> she was told <laughs> you ain't thinking. <laughs> Look, man, I'm not gonna be sitting there teaching my daughter how to put no condom on. Warren, it's not that. It's the fact that she was showing my brothers, but we were all. I was like, you should have been in the other room. I'm a twin with my brother, so we're the same you. age. So I'm not a child. I can sit and listen to. I got you. What's going on at the time? I'm like 13, 14. So it's like mm-hmm. I'm not a child. I can you are hear. A child, but all right, I'm letting you go. Off I'm though, a teenager. But, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what I mean by not a child. I'm a teenager. I just heard at you. at this point. <laughs> At this point, when your child is becoming a teenager, yeah. you're not in that baby stage anymore. So you're right. able to hear certain things. And that's one thing mm-hmm. about my mom that I love is she was always real with us. Mm-hmm. She showed us all the STDs. Ooh. Like she sat that'll there. Keep and you she, away. <laughs> she showed that'll, us. It would definitely keep you away. And that's why I was away for a long time. Yeah. But, so my, my, I worked for so long, though. <laughs> this is true. I, <laughs> once you in that moment. Damn, but you now, ain't she, thinking about that. But what kind she of made us again? sit there and like she made us sit there and watch all the videos of all the STDs Ooh. you could get. Like she really went, like she showed us, showed us about the preventing. So, any question: kind of, Do you think that? Were, uh, well, I, I'm gonna put a pin on that one. Mm-hmm. Did you? You didn't get to talk. Not, not like that. Not no sit down or anything. It was more so. Don't do it. Like my mom was just like, hey. Be careful, like, be careful with all that. Like, you know, just if you are, like, she tried to casually do it. It was I'm like an like, awkward conversation. Yeah, 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 cause she tried to. I think I don't know if we was driving somewhere. Like, it wasn't oh, like no. And you're in clothes. You can't yeah, go nowhere. So I'm just cause I have my headphones in, so I'm jamming. And then she's like, "Mom, I need to talk to you about something." I'm like, oh shit! What she I heard do? you was listening to. <laughs> no, <laughs> slop or my no. <laughs> you know what? So, but she, I think she Be had careful. just mentioned it. She was like, "I know you're getting older." We was in, I was in high school. I'm not sure what grade I was in. Maybe freshman, sophomore year, mm. whatever. But she was like, "She's talking about girls older. walking in class." <laughs> I know you're getting older, and I know <laughs> you're gonna want to experiment and do all this other stuff. But just make sure you're. 
you wear protection, but you shouldn't be doing any of that. It was just kind of one of those conversations. Mm -hmm. But at that point, I knew what sex was. I knew kind of well, of course you were already was. in your bag. <laughs> I knew what yeah. what it was, but <laughs> in my mind, I was like, "Shit, I'm about to wait to marriage anyway." So no, yeah. I like that. So oh, that's wow. literally you had how that happened. mindset at your age. Yeah, well, how old were you when she said that? I'm, I'm maybe 15, 16. Did you have that mindset before you? Before got to class once I knew what sex was, I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna just wait." I'm talking about before. Were you thinking that before you start to see the girls at school? Uh yeah. What, it was, happened, what happened after you saw the? I was like, "Oh man, she's fine," but I'm still gonna wait to marriage. That's dope. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah it was. You, it not, we went, you it became a joke. <laughs> Niggas, oh, you gonna be a 40 year virgin? I was like, "Fuck you, <laughs> I don't care. I'm gonna wait." Peer oh pressure. yeah, because you were a virgin all through high school. Mm -hmm. All through high school, oh, that was dope. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, you know, 15, 16 over there. Oh, nah. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Damn, man. She shaming you, man. Nah, I was like 16, 17. <laughs> yeah, I was. It was 16, 17. Damn. I, I didn't have a choice. What do you mean? You know what I'm saying? Not, not on that part. I was about I'm to say, you got to go to detail on that. Story. Not having a choice. Like, he was... The story Whoa. part. Yeah, you gotta watch that word. Yeah, on, you gotta be uh, YouTube. Yeah, they be oh. tripping. Yeah, but it's cool. By that, don't mean that. Just Time say, stamp that. <laughs> say bape. Bape. Um. <laughs> nah, I know. It was just in my household. It was different. It just. It mm -hmm. just yeah, I it was one of them out of sight, out of mind type things. Mm -hmm. I had questions, of course, as you should. <laughs> but it's like it wasn't really one of them things. You, it, it didn't feel like something to ask. It just felt weird. Yeah, well, it was more knowing biblical. who your parents are, yeah, yeah, straight, straight biblical. <laughs> yeah, nah, that nah, so that was GG. Don't do that until yep. you get married. If you yep. do, you gonna go to hell. Yeah, that was yep. that was kind of like you know in, in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. You know, so I really had fear of doing it, but it's like the only thing is around those times you start wondering like, man, your home hormones are. Yeah, you can't, only nah. thing is, I want to know I'm not crazy. No, you know, no, I'm saying like as a kid because mm -hmm. you're waking up. I mean, you know, it start happening in the yeah. morning. You wake up and you know, you what add happens? attention. I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> well, you get a wood on in the morning, so you wake you up. Should, you should know. Yeah, have four yeah. kids together. Stop. It yeah. was a joke. Like yeah, once happens. you once you start getting to a certain age, you start waking up uh, at attention. Is what yeah. we used to call at it. Attention. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> so you be like, God, what's going on? Like, um, and yeah, mm -hmm. so you just start to you don't know what's going on, but if you're not getting any conversation about. Hey, this is what's happening to you. Whoop whoop. You just like, bro, what's something Mine's wrong with me? Wondering, boy. Yeah. Early in the morning, like, damn. <laughs> what's going on? Oof. And then you just like, bro, I can't because I can't I'm to go take to heaven. it anymore. You know, it's one of them things. You damn, know. you say you can't because you gotta go to heaven. I didn't want to go to you know, hell is hot. This was always tough. And now that that leads us to a good question, but I want to get into that after. But what I wanted to say. <clears throat> Was <clears throat> you was talking about? Um, Who was you? you? You was talking about your story about the uh, oh. the the age. Damn, I said put a pin in that, yeah, and I did. forgot what I was going to say. I think you always do that. That's why you should have just said what you had to say. Then. But I, I wanted to get to if he had heard the mm -hmm. story or not. Mm -hmm. But you were saying some about the, the 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 watching the video and all that. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. We all watched. We sat down and we watched the videos of the STDs that you can get, like chlamydia. Yeah. I ain't see that until um, gonorrhea. Funny. Oh, okay. high school. Thank you. So, do you think that works over the religious aspect? I think that works because they because kids are all about seeing shit. Yeah, you gotta so, see it. And not to curse, but so it's over like, hell. Yeah, because yeah. some people, some kids, uh, you know, I'm just being honest with you. Like, <laughs> that's kind of crazy. That I'm just be, nowadays. <laughs> this kids nowadays, we, we ain't like they're not like how we used to be. Well, for us, I mean, yeah, because I mean, I seen the video, but when you get in them situations. It's like ah. it'll it'll prevent it. You you practice Try to be safe. safer. Yeah, you'll, you'll practice be, being you'll be more safe. safer. That and way. if any, it, it may not prevent. Yeah. But it'll it'll give that mindset of safe sex, practicing that, mm -hmm. and wanting not to have that or deal with that or go through that process. Because I didn't see the video until I was like maybe. I mean, had to be a junior yeah, in was, high school. In health. Yeah, in health when they yeah. when they force you. That was my second time seeing And you. I was just like, oh. Yeah, we know you. Oh, I mean, I, I knew the consequences, but seeing your vision, I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah the pictures, <laughs> and, yeah, it was just like, wow. That yeah. would have been, that would, that, after seeing that, I was terrified. I mean, and some good. people, it, it, it's. It scar it, you. Yeah, it, yeah. it'd be like, nah, I don't want to do that's, that. That's, so y'all would choose that over the, the hell 
I mean, tricky. that's part of it, but I mean, if we're going to get technically... You always want to put religion in there as well. You want to mix it so that way they'll have the aspects of seeing what they can actually go through and then also having religion on their end as well. That way they can know that it's not right to do anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> they'll have both. I think that's really a good way of teaching your child. We, we got to get into it with the religion thing because, I, you know... I mean, that's 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 a, that's a slippery slope, slope too because, I mean, we... If, well, depending we on a, your beliefs. We had a topic, that, remember? And, Mm-hmm. When we was talking about I when I, I, I posed the question I and I was saying, I was just thinking one day, I was just like, man, is it, it's wild because I grew up super religious Christian, you know, background. Um, and I have my belief in everything, of course, um, that everybody knows. But what I was saying was, do you think people would still keep the level of mm-hmm. faith and their mentality with Christianism or whatever release religion or belief? If it didn't come with the negative impact of not doing it, no. so if if, oh, yeah, I know what you're if yeah. hell wasn't a consequence of not, oh. if hell wasn't a consequence of not serving a particular uh, religion or yeah, do you think people would still go in as much as they are? Because it kind of with their beliefs or with their yeah, um, that's a really good that's a really good deep question. That's one of them. Smoking a blunt type questions yeah. for sure, but um, smoking within the clutch, man. Come on, let's do it. Stupid, uh, but uh, I mean, <clears throat> honestly, I don't think so because I think fear has always been yeah. a thing yep. to keep people in line. Which mm. then you start really breaking it down on what's really true, true what's, not. what's what's yeah. not, because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you're you're providing that construct to make people. Stay in this lane. In line. And don't go outside of it. And then when you put that as a law or as a thing, like if you go outside this line, there's a good chance you'll spend the rest of your life in some form of hell. Whether it, right. you know, depending on the religion, some form of damnation. The gulags. Yeah, the gulags, whatever you want to call it, that's mm-hmm. when you'll spend the rest of your days <clears throat> after you leave this earth. And I think that's been used as a tool to kind of control people's mindset on what they can and can't do. So do I feel like there are some truths to, you know, certain religions and certain aspects? Yes, I do feel like there are because me personally, I just, you know, I don't want to count everything that I've achieved or everything that I've gone through as just random luck, even though some people do. Mm -hmm. Some people don't believe in it, but I also understand over just growing up, seeing how people move because of this particular text said you got to move this way Mm -hmm. and in actuality that can be just spurred upon of just history and and people who had the power and the control to spin whatever narrative they want right so to your point i think when you put that out there hey do this you'll end up going to hell or don't do this you end up going to hell. Mm-hmm. I think that's the situation where if you just eliminate the negative part, people just say, well, why we got to do it? Right. And then it goes into the, the you know, just the deeper stuff that we've had conversations about that off, off, uh, off air about, you know, then is it really, is it really your choice then? I mean, you still have a choice to do what you want, mm-hmm. but it's, you've been manipulated to choose a certain path. Right. Whether you go down that path or not is up to you, but you know, it, it it definitely poses some questions for sure. As a kid, you've been kind of in, you know, swarmed around a certain belief. Mm -hmm. So you grow up with that belief because of your background Mm -hmm. or whatever household you're in. Yeah. Now you do, there are a lot of instances where people kind of do study and kind of find their own path. Yeah. But for the most part, you do normally tend to follow the line that you've been yeah, raised of upon. And so if there is no line, then you it's whatever anyway. Yeah, you just kind of free. Mm-hmm. And but that's a lot of things too with slaves. Yeah. You know, being enslaved and certain things that was passed down to us. Uh-huh. It was more on a we couldn't interpret it ourselves. We was kind of spoon fed a lot of information. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I ain't trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, just yeah. like an open because I'm always open minded, very religious, but I'm open minded too. Yeah. Like I, I'm a very deep thinker and I always pose a lot of questions Mm -hmm. because it makes me feel like religiously and I can only speak for Christian Christians because uh, that's my background people 
even some of the videos we be watching. I know mm-hmm. they like yeah, them church funny, but yeah, 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 yeah. It almost seemed like I'm being fake. Mm-hmm. Like I'm trying to do good just for the sake of yeah, not going to hell. Yeah, instead of just, and that's when you have to really look at yourself and take the religion out of it as a person. Facts. Are you doing this because oh you wanna you trying to secure yourself yeah. a yep. first class ticket to heaven yeah. or are you doing this because you want to <clears throat> genuinely be a good person and we see a lot of people that claim they are just the holiest of holiest they mm-hmm. go to church every Sunday they go to Bible study every Wednesday it ain't what it they is. and in actuality they pass the most judgment yep. they come off. As the the most, uh, you I'm know. I'm sorry, bro. Go open the damn chips, Lisa. <laughs> oh, um, we, in the, we in our Nisha bag. Over there. And she in her bag. <laughs> she Literally. over there trying to open another bag of Cheetos. But you know, we we Dang. see we seen. Go ahead and get the munching. Yeah. I'm about to take you out. But we we've seen those people that you know claim they they live in the church mm-hmm. and then they act the way they <clears> act, <throat> and you be like yeah. that that. Doesn't that don't line, line up, up yeah. with what you're saying or what you praise or what you post, uh, you know, on your social medias. And then we see how you act in person. You see how you cast judgment. We see how you treat people. It's like, so it's one of those type of things where you can't even just go strictly into just actually doing the act of going to church or yeah. whatever. It really comes down to you and what type of human being you want to be. I wanted to say, um, that's why a lot of people that aren't religious... <laughs> They don't really know where religion to go to because they're like, yeah. they'd be like, damn, these people do that. And then they do this. You know what I'm saying? And it's mm-hmm. like, I see you saying you're a Christian, but then you're drinking, you know, mm-hmm. and they say that's not right. So it's like, well, Jesus did turn water into wine. It's it's about moderation. Well, no, I'm it's just saying about it's just about how it looks. How you do. But I'm saying it'll yeah. always be that. This is mm-hmm. a person that doesn't know anything about that yeah, religion, no, but they just look it up or they read the Bible yeah, no, and sure. they just see I'm what just it kidding. says in the Bible. And then they're like, oh shit, this is not what. So a lot of people don't yeah. know what religion to be in. And I, mm-hmm. I said that. Like I said, like if I didn't grow up mm-hmm. with uh, being a Christian, with a Christian background, mm-hmm. I don't think I would have been swayed. Because a lot of what you see, like the preachers be flashy as hell. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. they, they like, you're supposed to be a church without a wrinkle or a spot, you know, according to the text. You're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world, mm-hmm. according to the text. I, sh- I should be able to spot you apart from everybody else. Yep. You got pe- preachers, nothing wrong with having social media, but you got preachers on Instagram doing the same thing everybody else doing. You know, it's like, it's hard to tell. And then they don't want to give the message direct anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, they want to spoon, you know, they want to spoon feed it. That's my word of the day, uh, mm-hmm. quote of the day. But uh, spoon feed. they want to give it to you in a very Joel Osteen way to where it just seems <laughs> motivated. Hey, you're going to be all right. Mm-hmm. We all go to sleep. <laughs> Some may not wake up, but there's a good chance that you're going to wake up. Mm. And if you did, I mean, you had to because you're watching me right now. <laughs> you had to. You know, it's like, yeah. it's, you know, it make you feel good. Mm-hmm. It's like feel good text. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not really according to the same yeah. Bible that you uh teaching out of. Mm-hmm. So I just feel like, you know, it's just one of them things where, you know, you got to really pray and have that relationship with God for yourself and mm-hmm. have your own yeah, I'm gonna say it's not about nobody else's relationship. Yeah, it's about you your own your understanding. Because there's yeah. so much judgment on. There's so many people. Mm-hmm. It'd be more people in the church talking shit than, especially to visitors yeah. mm-hmm. that have never been there. It's like, I've been in churches where I just feel the negative energy. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I'm supposed to be here. You supposed to be so welcome. Like some and- people be judgment on what you have on. <laughs> like people, some yeah. people don't even have the financials to be able to dress as nice as other people that go. How much some suits cost? And every they, yeah, they Sunday. come in, they look, they look down on you. They talk about yeah. you, but these mm-hmm. people are also people that it says come as you are. And people in church be so much about titles. Well, not coming up there as sexy red. No, yeah, no, nah, that, that, you know what you doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty tough. If yeah. you do that, then I mean, yeah, you, you should be in church. I mean, if but, that's all you got on, then you know, if you got to your name. I mean, I didn't I mean, see some stuff. I ain't turning no strippers I've around, man. You can't turn too. the stripper away. I didn't away. see some club just, dresses just that look like stripper dresses in church. Yeah, I seen that. she ain't sleep all Saturday night. She went straight yep. to the they church. Said, what they say? If, right, you've been, right. if you've been out all night, the club, you can go to church. All right, fair, fair yeah. enough. But just still backwards, but you know, it's it's still gonna be a. An eye opener to Sister Paula Dean over there. I'm like, oh, yeah. 
Oh. Because she don't want brother, you know, yeah. Jake to <laughs> lay hands. I'm not lay hands. Sister, let me talk to you in the back. We got to do some <laughs> personal fellowship. And, you know, it was in my spirit to it's some wild have a one-on-one. -on -one. I oh, heard yeah. the stories, dog. Very heard, much so. I, man. Mm. <laughs> I'm not going to get into it, but it's just <laughs> damn, like, you really doing this in the Lord's house, bro. Yeah, and then you have, yeah, and... <laughs> right, right by the cross. Something with a cross tattoo. Yeah, all of oh, it. Oh, with a cross just, tattoo. Just, just, just you got a cross tattoo? Nah. Okay. Yeah, all the tattoos I got, I I kept it away from like. The, I see the you blessed though. So. Oh, for sure. I definitely got that, but I didn't get the the cross tattoo. I was like, nah. Yeah. Oh, my mom got a tattoo, man. Yeah, you told me. Yeah, Did you say that last part or no? I don't think I said that last part. I don't think I just divulged that information. But yeah, she finally you got a tattoo. It? Yeah, it was a butterfly. She got a purple. Oh, you know, purple, purple. is her fake. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> she got a purple butterfly or whatever. I was like, That's wow, cool. my mom is really living it up. And I'm not mad at it. I'm, at, I'm actually happy for it. She, mom. Uh, she's about to be. You don't have to say it on air. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. But she. she good she, age. Yeah, good age, man. And she's enjoying her life. See, there's nothing wrong with that. I, and then I asked that because I'm 31. Mm -hmm. I don't have any tattoos. And I told yeah. Misha, you know, maybe for my, every time I say, maybe for my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She'd be like, boy, you too yeah. old for that. Nah, man. I mean, you can get a tattoo at any age, yeah. but I just feel like at this point, why? I got to get something live, though. Because be it's fire. something that they want. I mean, my thing is, if you want to get a tattoo, like I said, if you're going to wait this long, it got to be something worth it. Yeah, well, something you want. Something it that don't you gotta be, If you're going to go and get a damn Roman symbol, I mean, Ro Roman, numeral. Roman numeral. I was going to say symbol. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to get a Roman numeral, it's like, mm -hmm. you did it at 15. Uh, that's Ross' enemy. <laughs> so I ain't even going. <laughs> they on my shit. I know what that is. I know what that is. They on my shit. They on my, my birthday. That is wild. Yeah, it's on my shit. Right? I forgot you got your birthday in Roman number. Mm hmm Dog. Right next to the bliss, yeah. Y'all got to see. You got a billion mom, tattoos, Ross. Y'all got to see. Music. How funny that is clouds. that Ross got Roman numerals on the band. Mm -hmm. <laughs> struggle with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> the coincidence. Hey, yeah, it happens, bro. But you know what that is. Yeah, it's my fucking birthday. I better know what that is. Because they told you. <laughs> no, I Googled that shit <laughs> before I went up there. Hey, that's the right sure. way to do it. Like, yeah. you play this shit. Because for those people that went and got this like got Japanese or Chinese them. letters, sometimes the meaning of those change over years. Somebody clipped that part. What? This nigga got Roman numerals on yeah, his arm, tatted, yeah. and that's it's his not, enemy. It's not my enemy, man. Like, as long as I know this, I don't give a fuck about anything else. Yeah. Fuck four hey, I and mean, you ain't as long lying. as I got that, that's the only thing you I got. Better know what's on your body. That's one thing for sure. Facts. Facts man. I know I struggle with my I don't even use them. That's why I know. Yeah, I'm not the best at those. <laughs> but you're gonna catch me right now or saying them. Shit. Or tatted. <laughs> hey, this bro. nigga here. I got my shit. Hey, that's man. wild, bro. At least man. he knows what's on his arm. He got at least no one through 20. I don't. He know 1991. Wait, no, I know, I know <laughs> one, and, one, two, and three. Nisha, come on, bro. <laughs> Do we really need to know? Well, I guess, I guess. When it's I mean, time for the Super Bowl, we know it. I'll be sure. honest. Yeah, you're right. Super Bowl, yeah. Y'all wild. Or WrestleMania or I whatever. can't believe this, fam. I mean, shit. I don't portray like I do either, though. But he has it. I, I, it never, Roman I never. Roman numerals. The, yeah, I got it tatted on my shit. I never. Because, you know, everybody put their birthday, you know, yeah. just a number. What I was like, man, let me do my shit in Roman numerals, bro. Fuck it. Whatever. This is around the time I was working at the post office. So every time I got paid, I was going to the tattoo shops. Like, fuck it. And get all this shit done. Just young and just wilding. We all did that. You don't got nothing on your leg? Mm -mm. Nah, I was supposed to, but I got lazy. I was like, fuck it. So I never went back mm -hmm. and got it. So you never cried with none of your tattoos? Mm -hmm. The only one that hurt the most is when they got right here. Cried? Shade. No, never cried. In fact, I was taking a nap. <laughs> I was tired. As, ex as much as you exaggerate <laughs> yeah, yeah. on pain. Some of the stuff hurt. Like when you start getting to this spot and this spot right there, like on the inside, that was hurting. I was like, damn, but I ain't never cried. My hip bone hurt. What did it feel like? That shit hurt. It just felt like someone's drawing on your skin, but it's burning. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like a burn. Yeah. Uh -huh. It just feel like like a hot ass. The pen. shading don't feel mm. bad though. Mm -hmm. The it, shading don't feel it's when they're the writing the numbers. Yeah. The shading is not bad, but it's the number when it and you having it on like a bone, like I got Ooh. mine. That hurts. Let me know what I should get you. But they also have they have the numbing cream. So people will just put the numbing cream. On and then that shit don't work. They put it on my hip. That shit didn't work. 
So I don't know. Man. But I gotta be a real nigga though if I get it right. Oh yeah, I'm gonna record this shit out Can't of you. you know. I gotta be there for this. <laughs> let me let me know in the clutch if I um if I get a tattoo. Y'all should do a try not to laugh on that, Ross. And if he laugh, he gotta get a tattoo. <laughs> That's, that is the most wild. <laughs> Holy! What kind of shit you sound like them? The right. subscribers. Who well, are I mean, you? you already trying to get one anyway, so it's not like nobody that. promoting not for no one. Hell no! Nah, for no yeah. views. <laughs> I, I mean, but it's, it's a meeting tattoo for him <laughs> though. He gets the people he wanna put on his own okay. body. I'm not saying they're gonna pick it, but you gotta pick what you put on your body. But because you, you know he don't like to spend money either, too. So if he gonna spend some money on something permanent, he wanted to be his choice. Oh, man, that hell gonna have to be elite. <laughs> Got to and it's it. gonna have to be I'ma legit get an expensive tattoo. Not like some people we know. <laughs> We're not gonna <laughs> No, I'm just Hey, I'm saying like you work with in your tax bracket, bro, or you save up. You know, what I mean, but I'm saying like if you mm-hmm. get a tattoo, I think you got it. Yeah, yeah. I ain't going to Dago's nowadays. Oh, slugs! Because I went to Dago's, so I mean nowadays. Yeah, that was back then. That's oh, what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, when the I last got a tattoo time, when I was young. Okay, when the last time you heard somebody saying I'm going to Dago's to get a tattoo? I don't know. Exactly. That's what I said. That. Yeah. I got these. Uh, my mom and my grandma name at Dago's. I think I'll fly out somewhere. Mm-hmm. Go to Cali, but they expensive. Miami. Yeah. Cali? Mali, yeah. You go to Miami and Cali expensive. Yeah, to get Both a tattoo. Them. Yeah. Well, shit, just going out there. There's some people in Houston know this. Yeah, no, there's some good. Oh, no, yeah. I know some good. Uh, <laughs> That's why I was like, why you got to fly out anyway? They have yeah. a lot of nice tattoo artists in Houston. I, have some. I just feel like if you mess me up, I'm going to jail. I mean, yeah, you should. It's on your body permanently. So. Yeah, so we got But most of the people, see me. you know what I'm saying? You just check out their work. That's all you can do. Out. Check out their work. Check out if you see if you like their style of uh, their artistry. Because at the end of the day, it is a form of art. Like, and you is one of those things where it's like you gotta know what you're doing. What, what do you do it. if they show you and they spell like your mom name wrong? Oh shit! <laughs> Damn, bro. gotta see you. Shit. Because they make y'all sign like You see my brother document, tattoo, he had my grandma face. That mm-hmm. shit was fire. No, that was. Mm-hmm. They did a really good job on that photo. On the thing, whoever he went to, my brother got a lot. He got his arms in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got all that. Yeah, he tied it, tied it. Yeah, so I, yeah, he got his legs and arms. Mm-hmm. But with his too, it's like all right here. He got mm-hmm. a face. Mm-hmm. You probably should check see who he go to because he did it. He's really detailed. Yeah, and those are the. I can't believe I'm talking about this. I know. Hey man, what would I get though? I don't. Let me know in the clutch. What should your, I do? Your best friend is your kids. <laughs> Your yeah. kids' get names something or something that matters with, yeah. a lot to you, and most of the time that's your grandma. Yeah, something with her, either her her face would be fire. Yeah. Nah, I don't know. If you don't want to do that, then that's fine. But I'll probably saying. do. Um, mm-hmm. my kids, yeah. grandma. Mm-hmm. I'm about to say family is always the go to for a lot of people. It'll be lit if I got like a a, a, tr- a, tree. a tree on my yeah. back. I was just gonna, on your yeah. back. Yeah, what are you huh. gonna show it? Never. I'm gonna know it's there. Yeah, that's all. Oh yeah, that's right. You never see the roots. I don't ever show, roots, don't ever show my tattoos. So I mean, hey, unless you go on a boat, hope not. <laughs> yeah, I would hope not. Yeah, <laughs> go on the boat somewhere. You never yeah, know. Flex the back. Yeah, I'm gonna man. have to do some back workout so my back can be, you know, <laughs> want that tree looking right. You feel <laughs> me? I don't have no, you know, crazy oak tree. <laughs> One of the trees they used to have back in the day when the dinosaurs roamed. Let me be stupid. Bro. Oh shit. Yeah, you may end up adding more. If y'all keep going on. Yeah, to your family. Yeah. <laughs> you start your family. You lying, Ross. You start having kids. We ain't having no more kids. I start going to your kids' birthday parties. Right? Giving them noisy toys and, you know. Hello. Letting them turn up. When we see three Uncle little Rosses, Doug. when we going to have another one? <laughs> three little wa- three? She already gave you a, a, a amount. How many kids would you have, though? Two. Yeah, two is cool a sweet spot. Two is I'd a sweet two spot. Two is a sweet spot. That's the one, cool. I feel we, like we the thought kid... we were done with two because we had a girl and a boy. Yeah. <clears throat> but boy then we had boy. another two sets. Another girl and a boy. Yeah, another yeah, girl and a boy. That's wild. Mm-hmm. But now two two is a um yeah, like I always tell people with one kid, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know, sometimes that kid We have experience of a lot of kids that come around our kids that are single kids, like kids by themselves. Yeah. And you can definitely tell. Socially out of there. Yeah. But if you always have your kid in, in activities, activities, it's different. It's yep. That's what I was doing. Yeah. So like, <laughs> but you got some something. people with one kid and they just, just buy them. Yeah. yeah. Glue to their tablets and the TV. But I was always with my cousins. So, so that's another thing. That they were like my brothers and sisters anyway. So yeah. I was just all summer 
every two weekends I'm over there. I feel like it's fine. It works yeah. fine. Yeah. But I, like, I think when kids, they, they need some type of social interaction. Yeah. When you got those kids that you keep in a house all the time uh-uh. and you're not like letting yeah. them, like you said, go with their cousins or go take them places or be in activities, be in sports. Get no sun. You yeah. can definitely tell those kids. That's what I was saying. We can we can tell those kids <clears> when, <throat> when they be around our kids. It'd be like, mm-hmm. okay. You know? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I get, we can talk about people's kids again. Our baby here. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to do that when your girl is pregnant. Oh yeah, it's bad luck. Um, yeah, I'm not even gonna continue on that conversation. But yeah, um, I do want to talk about uh, so Keith Lee. Uh, I don't know if you guys know who that is. So oh, apparently, okay. I want to get you guys' idea and thoughts on this. So people were kind of up in arms a couple of weeks ago or last week with him going to Atlanta. Apparently, he went out there to try mm-hmm. some of the uh, popular restaurants. Some. Uh, that he was invited to and some that people were already always suggesting him to go to. Mm-hmm. You know, he always tell him, let me know where to go. Mm-hmm. He's a, a, a pretty much a foodie that mm-hmm. does revu- reviews and stuff like that. You heard of him? Uh, no, I've never heard of him. So he's like a foodie uh, guy who um, goes around. And this is just me paraphrasing. I don't have it all together either. But mm-hmm. apparently for what I've seen, goes, checks out the food, gives you his honest opinion on what uh, it tastes to like and, and all that. And I want to say he... Previously, like years ago, he used to be in MMA oh, for okay. 10 years. So he would travel the world, eat different foods in order to gain weight, lose weight. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know how that is when you got to uh, gain weight and lose and quick and stuff like that. So it's everything is about what you eat. Yeah. So he was real big on eating no matter where he traveled to. So mm-hmm. uh, that just kind of blew up his world of food. Ended up going crazy on TikTok because mm-hmm. he would always go to different restaurants. And he would just give his real raw, unbiased uh, opinion about it. So mm-hmm. he went to Atlanta. I think he was trying to call in an order and they said they don't do not do call-ins. Oh. Then I think he was trying to do a pickup order and then he said they don't do pickups. Damn. And I think he sent someone to go get the food because the big thing is he didn't he likes to go when you're not expecting them because he wants he pays. He doesn't want to take free meals for it. Yeah. He yeah. wanna pay. He wanna get the full experience like a regular customer. So that way he can kind of let them know to other people who may want to go to that restaurant mm-hmm. what his experience was like so they can go get that opportunity to go there as well. So since someone to go there, not knowing it was coming, I think the apparently the hour was like the wait was like three hours plus or oh, something like that. Jesus, bro. Customer service wasn't there. And so it was an uproar on social media because he was telling his experience about, oh, um, some people of course was in his favor, like, yeah. It's good that you, you know, spoke on that because some of these restaurants, especially these popular black restaurants that we make booming, that we get to be booming, mm. they kind of start to get real slacky on that customer service and mm-hmm. wait time. And it just kind of all starts to feel like, oh, just be lucky we feeding you some good food. Um, and then you have people that was like, we shouldn't be tearing down black restaurants. It's hard to uh, enough from what I've seen Ocho Cinco, him and Shannon touched on this topic. Uh, Ocho was like, man, it's hard enough for black restaurants to get in business in general. Mm-hmm. So why are you downing us? Go to some of these higher food chain restaurants and do that too. And he pretty much goes everywhere. Um, yeah. I think he recently recanted that statement because his daughter got on him. Ocho's daughter was uh, like, look, he's legit. And yeah, yeah, yeah. On his side. But I wanted to get y'all opinion on that. Like, how do y'all see that? Like, do y'all agree with the aspect of be real and unbiased or I think everybody black like, restaurants should get some I feel like slack. what makes me mad is um, when people go out and act like they don't talk about this or do this with their family or their friends like when you go to a restaurant and you get bad service you get bad service no matter like, where it's at no matter where it's at no matter who owns <clears throat> it no matter who the owner is black yeah. white color but whatever people, but people feel like well it's putting a stain on a restaurant who's struggling well, I mean, my thing is get better with your service. Like okay. it, sh- it should actually want to make you be a better company. And if you get if you get criticism like that, if we own, let's say we own a restaurant, right? All right. And somebody Best came in, in there, <laughs> somebody came in there, was like, and left a review online. Like mm-hmm. I was in line for thirty minutes. My food was incorrect. My food was cold. Mm-hmm. Whatever the situation may be, it's gonna make us want to be better. It's, right. We're gonna be like, damn. That's messed up. Mm-hmm. Damn, it looks bad on us, but we're going to make a better... This person going to come back the next time. They food going to be together. <clears throat> it ain't going to be no waiting line. Everything's going to be better. It's, it's like you take the you take the advice and you do better. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't go online going back and forth with the customer. That doesn't make your story any better. And what's crazy too, to add to that, because that's very true, I'm not sure 100% if this is true or not, but 
I did see something online where they were saying that the, the restaurant actually responded. One of the restaurants popular out there that he was actually talking about said, people come for good food, not good customer service. Mm. Or something in that And nature. that made them look worse. And then, of course, people were like, I mean, you're right. And I'll just be like, no. Since when do... Exactly. Because that same person commented on there, let them go to a restaurant. They got to wait in line. And they can't get in right away. Yeah, and it's some, and you it's know, some issues. They're going to be the main and then one. They like, rude when you and they're going to call their people or, their, like I said, the family or friend and be like, girl, I was just in line for this long or whatever, whatever. Yeah. And then the situation is going to be escalated. They're going to be upset and mad on the mm-hmm. phone with whoever they're talking to or talking to whoever they're talking to. <laughs> Not facts. Do we try to do that because it's a black restaurant? Mm, I, mean, I don't look that <clears> deep into it, bro. Like, it's, it, I did that for a white restaurant, whatever. Whoever owns Home it. Home restaurant. Like, whoever owns the restaurant, it's all about good customer service. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, that's just really what it the basis is. That logic of, a, we just here for the food. Then you can go to fast food restaurants then. Yep. If you here for the food and you cool with bad customer service, that's you. But I, the majority of people, when they're going to a restaurant and you're spending your money on something, then you want to make sure... The experience that you've heard from everywhere else, Mm -hmm. you want to make sure you are able to experience that as well. So that includes the customer service. That includes whoever is, you know, waiting your table, how they treated you as well Mm -hmm. or whatnot. That determines a lot of times what your tip will be, how much you plan on tipping and Uh stuff like that. So at the end of the day, it's a whole experience. Say you're trying to take. Take somebody out on a date and you want to, this is your first time going too. Mm-hmm. So you don't know what to expect, but you heard good things. And then you at the date, at the table, whatever, and then you have a, a rude waiter or waitress. You know what I'm saying? And that can mess up the vibe. You yeah. feel me? So it, it's it's more than just, I think people just get into that notion of, oh, because it's black, we got to we gotta support it 100% of the way. Regardless. Even if there's some BS going on. No. If anything, we should be holding our people accountable too, <clears throat> just like we want to, just like we hold these other places accountable. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So keep the same energy. If it's good service, if it's, it's good service. If it's bad service, it's bad service. Mm. That's just what it is. You feel me? So no, like, that's that, facts. that notion is just, I'm like, all right, bro. Yeah, that's what okay. I, I Hold people accountable. Yeah, just, yeah, man. All right. That's all you got to do. Stop being, stop being to the point to where you all like, oh, this, we got to be, be good with this, this race, that race, just yeah, because no, black owned. No, if they don't have their shit together, they don't have it together. Accountable. Good is good, man. Yeah. It, it, it shouldn't matter. Like, all that shouldn't necessarily matter. Um, in the grand scheme of things, you mm-hmm. know, but I just wanted to get y'all uh, thoughts on that because I knew it was something that was going around. I was surprised so many people was like mm-hmm. mad at him. It was to the point where I think they were sending him threats to his family. Are you serious? Yeah, because you know, y'all mm-hmm. niggas act like y'all own stock in the restaurant. You yeah, stop. They usually don't. I mean, relax, bro. There's some, you know, some, some weirdo. This, this, that mom mentality is. I think people so do. weird. Uh-uh, excuse me. People do certain things for clout, though. I think they just all, you know, everybody get on, on the bandwagon. Band and they be yeah. like, oh, well, I'm with this person just because they want to get some kind of publicity. I don't think people all, everybody actually thinks that way, honestly. <laughs> nah, bro. It's it's not that serious, man. It's just he gave his opinion. There it is. If you didn't like it, you can choose to go to a restaurant, restaurant or not. Happy motherfuckers ain't never been. You you <laughs> so uh, y'all bro. just... Just right. hopping on the on the wave just to say something because it's a black business. Like, stop it, bro. I can't wait till he come like the Trill Burgers. Or something. I don't know if he's already done it, mm-hmm. uh, but I did say I wanted to follow his uh, journey because mm-hmm. he's saying pretty cool, straightforward, chill, family oriented. So you know, something I can rock with. But somebody can always hate something that yeah, you do. So of course, if you don't have no haters, then there's something ain't right. Because exactly. somebody yeah. will log in just to say something negative, mm-hmm. just. Because, but you know, can. but you know what's so funny though, people doing all this online with him going to all these restaurants, but all this is doing is giving him more publicity. Facts. I bet you all these more restaurants are reaching out to him. I'm pretty sure yeah, they to do. get him to go and do videos at their restaurants. <clears throat> they like, look, I, we got better service, so come over here and get us some publicity. And I like you got all this going on. We can get this from our restaurant. I like mm-hmm. it because he don't necessarily um, let you know when. No, he just He's shows coming. up. That's just, lit. Yeah. That way you can't get ready. Yeah. And that was his thing. That's his thing. Like, he don't want you to know when he's coming. He want to be able to just pop up. Because he want to be able to let other people who have to come, mm-hmm. once he done gave his review, if you go there, you a regular person, so that you want to make sure you're getting the same level of customer service, mm-hmm. but not because of who you are. 
because you know <clears throat> it was just good customer service. Well, like it shouldn't be. Oh, so and so coming. Let's let's. Oh, we gonna we got their plate lined up and we whoopty whooping. You know they do that shit. <laughs> Some restaurants oh, where yeah. they, they be doing the videos. Mm -hmm. They pause the line. Niggas come in there, walk in breezy, air conditioning on, perfect. Mm -hmm. They, they food. I, it's funny because me and Warren <laughs> had a conversation. Uh, we was talking about like if we were ever in that limelight where like of course you are where you are now, but I'm just mm -hmm. saying where it was like like mm -hmm. high high celebrity Jay Z yeah, status, course, course. and we going into the restaurant and like. We don't want nobody to stop no restaurant for us. Like we don't yeah, want, no. like we don't. I don't want that. I don't mm -hmm. want them to be like, oh, y'all wait an hour. We're gonna let them go in front of y'all. No, let people been here before us. Let them go eat. Like we're not. Facts. I don't. Mm -hmm. I hate when they I wanna have. I want to wait just for everybody. I hate like when they have else. these celebrities to be like, no, nah, shut all that shit down for me. Let me get in first. Everybody that's been waiting an hour, it's okay. They're gonna go behind me. No, that's not how you do that. That's mm -hmm. like you got to think about. That's why I love the fact that he. Don't let it be known that he come in. Mm -hmm. he, he be a regular ass customer because it's people out there that deal with that on a normal basis. I like, think, yeah, no, it's, I think for me, if I was, if I had that level of status, I would mm -hmm. either come super early yeah, or I would send somebody to go get it. Because when, right. you're, on, when you're on Jay-Z level, you actually can cause an uproar. Yeah. just Like, like it's not there. even about you no more. It's about the people. Okay. So point. do this. If you're on that status, like you just mentioned, and you're on that Jay-Z level. You can shut the whole damn store down and pay for it. And that way you got the restaurant and they're closed for the day for everybody well, else. Well, that's more messed up than... Uh... But I'm saying... <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that like as if... No, we can't eat. You have, <laughs> if you go to a restaurant right now, Warren, right? Let's just uh -huh. say we go there and it's 11 o'clock. We have BJ's or something. And they close at 11. Mm -hmm. And you think they close, but they're open... Like they're having it at a regular have time a that they would be closed. Yeah. They'll have it closed for regular people that on a normal day to be closed at that time. But it'll be open for you. All right, let's not do Jake. Let's do rest in peace, Michael Jackson. <laughs> and the same thing for him. Michael nah. Jackson could not. When I yeah, tell bro, you, he couldn't. Bro. He could not do nothing normal. Yeah. Because so at a regular close so a regular close time of a restaurant, he can. Yeah, act, he would he, actually that's have what I'm to. Saying. But then, I mean, that's if they open up regularly at eleven, I but think you that's come a at person, ten and you get to eat by yourself before. Yeah, no, nah, that's, that's what I mean by that. That's what Disney does. I think. Like, cause I remember Kevin Hart saying that he wanted to rent out Disney for his son oh, okay. or his kids, someone. I think his kids. Okay. For um, uh, and he they couldn't just rent the park out. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. had to rent it out. He rented the park out for hours. I want to say before they open. Oh. Uh, you can't just. Yeah, yeah. Can't shut down. Take the day. day. Yeah, because you know that's money. Yeah, that's, they got a different. They got a different of kind of money. Yeah, they got to be before yeah, or after. That's, that's why I said after they close or before. But no, they're just, open. It, I think it depends on the person too. But like mm -hmm. how I am, I would either get somebody to go do it or mm -hmm. pick it up for me. Or if I wanted to go out, I would probably try to. It depends on what level of status I'm on. Like, yeah, true. You probably yeah. have to call ahead of time. Yeah, see. and I would try to preserve because again, you're right. You, but it depends on the person too. Like. How thoughtful are they are to the people? That's and true. then if you are thoughtful, you also got to think it's going to be some niggas that's going to lose it. Chris oh, Brown yeah. can't just go nope. oh, yeah, to no. the Galleria. Nope. Yeah, I remember, gonna, I remember gonna, that. That was crazy. But that even what, even without it being public, if Chris Brown walks in the Galleria it's GG's. to go to the full raps, it's GG's. Yeah. think about that. That's true. Young people, bro, that's social media. By the time people find out he's in there, they're gonna be niggas speeding to get yeah. to where he is. That's true. Yeah. To just to you know what I'm saying? So it's some things you can't do yeah. because it's like it's not even you, it's just how people react to you. Mm -hmm. That's true. So it's like you gotta think about things on both ends. I wouldn't even know what to do at that level of I don't even know if I want that. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, yeah, right. yeah, what if it just happened to you though? How do you handle that? If it just like you don't choose it, but it just you just get that fame. Awful, just you know what they uh, I seen an interview with uh, sex, speaking mm -hmm. of that with Sexy Red, where she kind of said that's what happened with her. Like, she Sorry. made that song, no, for real, no, she, bro. no, for real. They said she made that song about her ex and that mm -hmm. one, that one song, Booty Ho, whatever, mm -hmm. and yeah, it bro. went viral. She said she wasn't even like trying to she be, really wasn't, she wasn't, bro. and people just got with the song, and then the label called her and yeah, was like, hey, it was over, bro. like, does that's that, what happened. Does that expose? Our level it of does. brain cells. And that's why I said that humans? it's sad the way the society is now because they felt like that was a song. Oh, let me get, like, who's this girl? Let me. Yeah. That, so I believe her because I don't think she, I mean, she wouldn't they, think She said that's legit. How, but how she is, you know, I, like, 
Any other time, I wouldn't believe that for any other, anybody else. But how she is and how she just don't give a f, she don't, and how she just come out the way she is and don't care. That's why you gotta respect her because she just who she is. Yeah, she is probably it's like the, she's I probably the realest person like in the industry. That's why I feel like, ironically, <laughs> she probably is, and that's why I feel like she probably just flat out like it just happened that way. No, I don't have no problem with that. I mean, cool, that's fine. <laughs> I don't give a shit about it. Take that shit off my timeline. But it's just I'm the, the guy fact now. That that's how the society <laughs> is now. I don't even scroll past shit no more. <laughs> I stop and say, "Why am I seeing this shit?" I hit them little three little dots now. For real, I'm that nigga now. And you give me that dumbass. Oh well, according to the likes that other people. No, nope, I don't want to see this. <laughs> Poof. I'm tired of seeing certain things because we we're we're starting to. I don't know, man. We're really starting to like. Our brain is gel. Yeah. <laughs> like you're getting mushy. Yeah. Just, Mushier than what it is. Just, like for real. Cause like we're 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 taking in all this stuff all day, every day, listening to the same names, the same drama, the same mm-hmm. back and yep. forth. Like, I don't think people realize we're gonna be a study. <laughs> mm-hmm. I told you we're the guinea pig age. They're, you're getting fed certain news, certain clips mm-hmm. every day, all day. And you all day you and your phone just mm-hmm. soaking that shit in. What do you think that's doing to you mentally? That's the same thing happened when Justin LeBoy thing started coming out. When he started sending them this shit and women was, oh, yeah. yeah Get a nigga to cash up you 1500 if he real randomly on a Tuesday at one. <laughs> what? Why? <sighs> Tell me why. And then now it turns to one of the things where y'all, at first it was just like, that's crazy. So it was like everybody reposting it. Mm-hmm. Weeks, months, and months at a time, different, uh, like, unironic as random things. Mm-hmm. Then it started to become a belief system. Mm-hmm. Now your conscious is in line with your subconscious on bullshit. Now you believing, why don't he just send me $1,500? Does he not love me? <sighs> or the biggest one to me, which is a good question too for mm-hmm. y'all. Do you need validation on social media to oh my god for your relationship? Oh my god, not even relationship. For like life. if you're dating someone mm-hmm. and they're and they don't post you at all, like at all, like nothing of you, would you feel some type of way? Mm. I, I, back honestly, then, back then, I did. I would have, mm-hmm. but now I'm okay with it because it's like it's whatever. Like I, I don't, I don't put too much credence into it because at the end of the day. You you only allow people to see things that you want them to see. You know right. what I'm saying? So if if it's a situation where our relationship is good and it's fine, I, there ain't no issues on that level. I don't. I'm not tripping. But I think it's to a point now where if you don't post, it's like oh, like it's like it needs to be validated. Mm-hmm. It's starting to become a thing. What do you think about that? For me, personally, I don't, I don't give a fuck. It's okay, whatever. so I feel like I, de- I, I guess it depends on who you're with. Because I feel like it's women out there that really don't care about that. But there's also insecure women that need that. And I just feel like you think it's insecurity, or do you think it? I think it. I think it's. I th- no, I'm serious. Like I think okay, it's like so a it's real like, thing now. So like, it is. A, I do believe it became a thing. Because like, come on, let's stop playing. It, like we it, don't know that it started to be a norm because. Everybody posts their person, yeah, you know. Yeah. So that's why I said it also depends on who you're with because at the end of the day, it is a norm. But you don't got to do within the world. You mm-hmm. can do what's in your relationship. Right, so yeah. I feel like it depends on who you're with yeah. and you know how strong your relationship is because I think like me and you've been together so long, it's like whatever. Yeah, we, 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 like we we kind of <laughs> don't really be with the world. We kind of with each other. So yeah. it's like some shit could go on and it could be like. Damn, that's crazy. Or we can be like, ah, you know, we'll do it. Like we do that sometimes. We'll be like, all right, let's do it. And be like, uh, no, not today. You know? So it's like it kind of just depends on who you with mm-hmm. and how strong your relationship is. If we're speaking of a person, or just period, if you want to do it. Yeah. I feel like we're in a stage. <clears throat> and I play devil's advocate so that we can all stop being on the same page. I feel like we're in a state where we do do that unknowingly because it may not be validation, but mm-hmm. we do that for some reason now to either show appreciate it, like showing appreciation and validation. You you 
It's like a thin line. Mm -hmm. Why do we post pictures of our moms on social media and say Happy Mother's Day? Because I mean, the it show, became a thing. You know. It, it's, it's crazy now that I'm thinking about what you're saying because that's so true. Like, social media became the... the like, it's like a... It's like you have... Like, now in your head, like, that's how much the internet has effed us all up. Because it's like... <laughs> yeah. We feel like it became a normal thing for so many years that we feel like, okay, it's this person's birthday. We got to yeah, make sure yeah. we tag them yeah, yeah, yeah. on and, their and, birthday. And this isn't everybody. Yeah. Of course. But I'm there's just some saying. people out there that be like, it is, it's funny because now we're, we're like they said, in a millennium. So we are in that state. No, we're the millennials. Yeah. Now this shit is. Well, that's why I said we. Because yeah, Gen Z, Gen for Gen us, Z. we were coming up when, it, when the internet first came out. No, for sure. So for us, we were like new to it. These mm -hmm. kids nowadays are just there. So but they're, that's their no, social but norm. You, but you got those people in the world now that are like, you got them older people. You know what I'm talking about? That we be yeah. looking at crazy because they be like, oh, the government's in the phone and the yeah, internet yeah, yeah, yeah. is the internet's going to get you. And, you know, because they like, because they kind of see what it's doing to everybody else. So they're seeing a different viewpoint. We're all seeing different stages of that's that's why it's like you kind of can understand the them time. a little bit, but it's like to me, I don't think they're whole lives crazy. Sometimes there there be the weirdos out there, but but I'm saying like too like when because I'm I'm I do it, but I guess I do it in a for a public. Mm -hmm. I mean, for y'all, it's like y'all kind of yeah, it's like public is, appreciation, but I wouldn't necessarily care about oh. But it helps though with what you guys do for YouTube fully. It helps that you're on social media because mm -hmm. right. social media is the way. And so I think it gives you a part of people, a part of you, a mm -hmm. part of you that they you want that. connected to your job. So that's why I said it's a little different when you're doing what you're doing. I feel like if you're not like a public figure or if you're not like into social media or on YouTube or on TikTok or Twitch, whatever it is, I feel like you shouldn't be as heavy because I feel like it's really no purpose. But because of the world is so how it is now, mm -hmm. you feel like you have to be with everybody else when I feel like it's not a must. Mm -hmm. And that's true because I feel like if you're not getting no money off, I mean, that's just how I have that mindset. I feel like if you ain't getting no money off of posting your cars every day mm -hmm. or posting with your jewelry or your clothes, why do it? I think we're disconnecting a connection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't if that ain't hit y'all, bro. I don't know what to tell <laughs> Disconnecting you. Disconnecting the connection. <laughs> because people will post a paragraph uh -huh. of an appreciation post to mm -hmm. you. But they can't call you and instead tell you. of calling yep. your phone yep. and giving you that indirect. Because mm -hmm. people don't like I honestly think it'd be cap because it'd be, it be for the people. Like you're not doing this. Facts. You don't call me on a normal day telling me all this Facts. stuff that you yeah, posted yeah, on this yeah, post, yeah. but you can go and sit Facts. there and post it for the world to see. Facts. And I feel like with those kind of people, that's why sometimes like when it come down to birthdays and stuff like that, like it's not all the time that I think, I think we started to do it, but it didn't used to be like that because we felt like in a way it was like kind of fake. Cause it was like, we sit in the same bed laying next to each other and we write a paragraph. I remember about, I told you that. Yeah, remember we that? write a paragraph about how you love oh this God, person and you inspire this person, this and this and that. Now and then every year it gets shorter and shorter. But I would always and shorter. I would always we would always do that anyway to each other in words. Yeah. And then we'll just do like a, a appreciation, like a, a public post. Yeah, like happy birthday. To yeah. Boom. And that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it ain't like I ain't going in on no life story. Yeah, there's mm -mm. no point. People, oh, I remember when yeah. our two moons met. And then you'd be our like, damn, moons. I ain't talked to this person in a year or so, but they can post all this about me on social media. Yeah. Like, I be reposting stuff because I have friends like that that I don't talk to every day or barely talk to, mm -hmm. but they'll put like a thing on there. I'll just repost it just because, you know, yeah, it's just what it is. But you know those people that you really ain't talked to and it'd be like, oh, they posted pictures of you from like, Oh six or some shit like that. That you be like, <laughs> ah. all right. The texts, the happy birthday texts got smaller. Yeah, it did. I'm okay with that though, because I feel like. Or maybe people just don't like me no more. With this nigga here. Anybody else? <laughs> I, I just feel anybody like, else? I just feel like, hey, I call, so it don't matter. I call no, for I certain people. Me. Yeah, if for certain people, I call, and then for certain people, so that's the conversation. Certain yeah. people, Ross, yeah, you certain barely people. got people numbers saving your phone, so we know that True. you yeah. don't really need. So don't save a number. Yeah, hey, seven one three, happy birthday! <laughs> Look at you. You got to figure out who telling you happy birthday. Shit. Happy birthday two eight one. 
Yeah. Uh, I got the Instagram, so that's all I know. I can message you there. Or, you know, hey, what's happy birthday? What are we doing tonight? We're disconnecting a connection. <laughs> no, we're not. We are. I'm prioritizing my connections <clears throat> with certain people. That's I'm okay. not trying to connect with everybody because you mm. can't. You, you're going to be pulled each and every way. So certain people, I have certain things that I will say or address to them on in public in private, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And then certain people, you know, you keep it casual, like, hey, happy birthday, you know what I'm saying? Well, HBD. No, nah, I don't do nothing, nobody like that. I just, I actually type it out, happy birthday, hope you have a blessed one. Keep it simple, Yeah. you know what I'm saying? You, and we do it with family members too. Certain family oh, members yeah. get get those phone calls and the mm. text, and then certain family members <clears> don't, <throat> don't mean that you, you know, you don't care about them, but... You, obviously, your relation, your connection with that person is would. not as strong as it would be. So to piggyback on the question you asked, like I'm in the trip, but you don't post me like that. Like if our relationship is good, I'm at that point in my life, I'm just I'm here for the peace, man. Mm. I'm here for the peace. So if the relationship is that. good and cool. I don't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. I'm cool with it. Like what happens on social media, what I do on YouTube, <clears throat> that's different from what how I want my personal life to be. Right. I want my personal life to be peace. An extension of peace and mm -hmm. the chaotic stuff that <clears throat> we deal with on a daily basis. That's you know for everybody else. But I want to be able if I'm kicking it with someone, vibing with someone, I'm not gonna trip. I'll you know I'll rock it with you. I'll <laughs> you know I'm saying I'll turn up with you. We'll have a cool little vids like this. You know recently you know if I'm hanging with someone, I just got vids on my phone. Mm. Just just for my memory's sake. You feel me? So he got he got that uh just in case. Nah, he's stupid. No, I, I like it that way to. though because if it's not nothing serious, there's yeah. no point of posting it on social media. Mm. And I've I'm had happy to learn you that. did. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm happy he. Learn. And it's, it's, it's yeah, it's growth because for him to even say that, that's growth for Ross because we mm -hmm. all seen and your followers as well mm -hmm. uh, that people have post, been posted on your page and stuff Terrible. that have not been worthy mm -hmm. of you mm -hmm. and. Terrible. You terrible. found you found <laughs> terrible, you finally terrible. found that route that's best for you, and I feel like yeah. that's the best way to do it because there's no point of posting that person if two weeks from now they're gonna be out your hey, life. Bro, yeah. Just leave the smokers alone, man. <laughs> leave them smokers alone. You're bro. dumb. You really are. I okay, could, I could. We're not tell gonna go a smoker there from a mile away. <laughs> you gotta leave them alone, bro. You smoke of vibes, bro. Leave it alone, man. I just said people that were not worthy of him are not in his life anymore. He, he, and he's finally understanding. He ignored that. the signs. That's bro. good. Did you find a Lucy in the cup holder? I am dead. No, I didn't, bro. <laughs> it just magically appeared, to be honest. Yeah, with you. one in her ear. Nah. I, so that's a true smoker. Nah, boy. man. You would need to stop. You're saying, you know. I hear you. Anyways. Let people know what's up. Yeah. We was we that that was a uh... <laughs> I was got the crazies. I think you got a crazy like magnetic field on your back or something. It's been chill as of late. The arrows they hit him. Yeah, like the crazy ones though. Like the, it's been chill as of late. He got loony arrow. It ain't even straight. It's a wiggly arrow that oh, goes into certain people. He get hit by <laughs> like. You, no, nah, it's been chill. I haven't had to deal with, kind of that <clears throat> but no, nah, that's that, that is so. growth. I mean, because <laughs> you know, is. we we all go through that. Because I don't think you know, it's it's tough. It's all I asked you that before. Is it tougher to date now with social media? What it was back then, oh, and for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I feel yeah, like I, I, I still feel like it's them. split because I feel like, yeah, you, yeah, a person on social media is making up a story. Yeah, they are. But I am able to judge off that made up story if mm -hmm. you even worth talking to. And people yeah, still true. try it. People still try no, it. No, that's fine. But if, if I'm seeing, we always I always say that if I'm seeing your ass in every picture before your face, I already put you in that category. Mm -hmm. if, if you're looking for someone to like mm -hmm. settle down with. So, but you're yeah. in that settle down. Yeah, stage. I'm, 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 like I said, bring me some peace and cool energy, good vibes. And you got <clears throat> something going for yourself, then we good. Cause I got something going for myself, and I'm trying to maintain that. So hey, that I ladies, don't, I don't. You don't need a baggage with you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to cheesecake. What? <laughs> <laughs> we going? You got a problem Ooh, with cheese? Oh my god! So uh, let me just scare this up real quick. So did y'all see? I don't know if I did or didn't. And I should have said something about this. Did y'all see the interview with um, Million Dollars? What is it called? The podcast. Million Dollars Worth of Fame. Mm. Yes, mm. with mm. Um, Young Miami. 
Yes. No, mm-hmm. I seen the uh, clip. <sighs> I ain't but seen I didn't okay, watch never mind. It. We can, when y'all see it, we'll come back and talk about it. Wow, what happened? Get, I probably, I'm not gonna try. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm well, it was a way. clip with Young Miami, and they were she asking was talking about the list, right? The list. Okay. Oh, okay. And um, you brought up the cheesecake, so I was mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, let me see how they thought about right. her. Segway she, University, I, welcome. Look, I, I just want to see what y'all thought about her comments about how she felt about it. What she said? I mean, she was just saying my that. Yawning. Oh man, my bad. <laughs> she my was saying that she. You know, she don't care. She was like, I'm down for whatever. She said, you know, I can find She it. was like, wherever my nigga want to go, I'll wow. go. She was like, uh, and, and he and they was like, oh, this is a girl that's up. This is a girl that's up saying this, y'all. She was like, he, you know, they was yeah. trying to be funny. Wow. Yeah. So she was actually like with it. Mm. She was like, he want to go to, she was like, I go anywhere you want to go. But that's also, and then you also see girls in the comments talking about some, well, that's her. That's how she feels. All right, let yeah. me let me see if I can play it. Yeah, so, yeah. okay. Got a lot of people herself, but I'm pretty sure she's from the hood. So it's a lot of places that I I believe that's me crazy. and me the best. I was I believe that. that was on that list. You seen that list? Mm-hmm. And they was capping. Yeah, like I said, I'm going wherever my nigga going. I love oh, that shit. Oh, 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 so you going cheesecake factory? Yeah. You go. You go to Applebee's. I'm going to Applebee's. Just have a look at the menu. Chipotle. <laughs> yeah, wherever, wherever he, he go. going. See, that's I'm, what I'm, I'm talking about. I'm going wherever he going. I don't give right. a fuck if he goes to the park. If she like you, I'm, I'm going. She I'm said, gonna feel like we'll I'm go, on the field day. Like my nigga, that's all that matters. If See, she, this is what I'm talking about. If, like. if a woman likes you, she going where you going, bro. She was like, if you know, she said, I'm going to car look at the menu. That's the last part she said. But I was like, if a woman likes you, I don't agree with everything she says. But that I was like, you know what, Carisha. All right, I agree with you because mm-hmm. that's how I am. I'm down. That's why I was telling y'all to be and I'm down to do whatever. Like, yeah. I brought up chilling at the house, not meeting the first date. But yeah, but yeah. it's, it's, it's just, like it's it don't like always whatever. have to be. Like, if someone likes you, yeah. they going to be down. Exactly. That's that's and then that's I, why that list is, like it still that works. It's for the money. If y'all don't obviously know by now, men out there, women that are like, oh, I need to go here. I need to go there. I need I to have this. I wouldn't necessarily say they for the money. I just think yeah. that's, that's their, their personal. standard. Yeah. And you just know y'all not compatible. Yeah, that, what, that's literally what it is. Why can't we just say, hey, we're not compatible. We have compatibility issues. I can tell. Let's just go our separate ways without yeah. any, you know, bad blood or any, you know, anybody talking about this on a slugging. Let's yeah. just go separate ways. We don't, we're not compatible in a lot yeah, of things. That's true. Let's move on. And it's not just being incompatible, but it's also not willing to compromise. Mm-hmm. Like if you're not willing to comp- compromise on certain things that you're not used to. Let's just move on. That makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, for me personally, mm-hmm. if anybody would ever like, oh no, like if you would have been like, I ain't going to no TGI, nigga. You gonna have to whoop de whoop. We would never be <laughs> it here. Would right work. Now. <laughs> and that's just you know that particular situation. You feel me? But there will be a guy that want to take someone. Yeah, to it's, a, it's niggas a that high, think like that. High end restaurant. Oh, or my whatever. girl ain't going to no. Oh. And that's fine. That works Ooh. for y'all. Y'all can make it work. A nigga that got some money. If I want to take you somewhere, and depending on our communication and the things I find out that you like or whatever, then we go from there. Oh, I'm Warren. not about to you know trip off that shit. Like all right, man, cool. And I, it, was something, I, it was something you said, Ross. That's why I said that. So that way I can remember. Um, I didn't mean to cut you off. But I mean, there's yeah. a video that I sent you, mm-hmm. that I sent you last night, where there's a man that uh, there's a man that doesn't have it, right? Mm-hmm. And his funds. Have what? Like financially. Oh. Like he's not up. <laughs> so you know, a lot like, of things he's not even have. Okay, so what I mean by that is he's not financially up. Like there's another man that's on there. There's two you. guys that yeah. are in a situation where you have a man that <laughs> Damn, pays. Damn, got a lot of messages. He <laughs> pays for everything. Mm-hmm. In his household, hundred percent of the bills. Okay. And as another guy that pays fifty percent of okay. he, him and his wife go or girlfriend go fifty fifty. Okay. And basically, they're having a conversation where it's like real. I want to want to look at it because it's like I can understand both views on it. Yeah. Because the guy that's like paying a hundred percent, he was like, "Look," he said, "I'm not trying to say what you're doing is wrong. I'm not trying to say the life you live is not right." He was like, "But for me, I just can't live that way." He said, "For me, I had to get myself up." So okay. my wife could not have to work. Okay. He and said that. And he said that's how I wanted to live. He said I was in a situation just like you. He said where well, I didn't have it. He said, but you know what I did? I got my money up. And then while I was getting my money up, my wife stood by me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and all I wanted her to do was support me. Is it bad? I could tell which dude. Yeah. Uh, got I, the money. He was doing. Yeah, that's what I said when I was first clicked on it. I can't really see. It I'll play the phone. beginning real quick, and yeah. then we'll probably end on this one. Okay. Brother. I'm making $14 an hour. What you, what you expect? Oh, 
That's damn. You damn. know, you yeah. still on there. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, 100%. You're not a man. You're not a man. How? That's the I'm 14 still working. hour dude. I'm still providing, right? So what makes me not a man? Because I'm going 50-50 with my he woman. Said, mm. Mm. Oh, I, I hear that, man. I was only going to watch the first lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> so now y'all see why I brought it up. I want a child opinion real quick. I know <laughs> we're about to get ready in the pod, but... I I seen this yeah. and I was like, man, I mean, it yeah. hit it like because I because remember I was the one that was saying like, man, people you know ain't there, you know, letting people get there, and I was on the guy side. But when he actually spit that and when he said what he said, it kind of reminded me of how Warren thinks and mm-hmm. how he'd be like, man, like I'm gonna make sure y'all have it and I'm not gonna <clears throat> stop until that happens. That's yeah. a real man. You yeah, got men out true. here like he, that's working a fourteen dollars an hour job, which there's nothing against them. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you want more, you're gonna do more. You're gonna fight. You're gonna have to. Yeah. You don't want your family to be struggling. Like at the end of the day, <laughs> you're no. Nah, I ain't trying to cut you off. I'm so sorry because you cook. But th- this one kind of. <sighs> so, um, how did you guys? What did you guys think about it? I mean, uh, you, um, my, my man, it's it's crazy when you come. <clears throat> Man, we can we can both attest to this. Where you come from, where we come from, mm-hmm. and then you know the struggles, and you know the late nights, and you know the the setbacks, and you know the problems that come from where <laughs> we grew up and how we had to live to get it to where we are now. It's like you you see where the guy. It's coming from where he's like, yeah, yeah. like I, I was there where you are mm-hmm. and I'm trying to let you know, I'm trying to give you game. Like what you're doing, it ain't bad, but it ain't enough if right. you're really trying to, you know, set yourself up, set your family up. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, we get comfortable. We get complacent. <clears throat> oh, right. this is cool. Well, I'm at right here. Mm-hmm. This is cool. My girl like it cool. But will you want your girl to not have to work? Right. We well, you want your girl to just, you know, and this is just on the standpoint of not trying to control a woman. Yeah, but based like, on this conversation. Yeah, but just yeah, yeah. like, wouldn't you want someone, you know what I'm saying, like, to be good and you know you got, you? they know you got them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And she got you and supporting everything that you got going on mm-hmm. and she ain't got to worry about that. Like, that's, that's the dream. We all sit up here and talk about how much we want to get our moms out of certain situations. <clears throat> Why can't that be the same applied to your girl if you really care about them? Mm. If you trying to really elevate yourself, not you just kind of just now you not not just keep them around because you know it's cool and comfortable. Yeah. But so I get what he's saying, and I also understand that niggas' egos are our biggest downfall. And a motherfucker, oh, oh, you you coming from a place of money? He just said I was, I was you just was. you. You ignored that part because you see the end game. You mm-hmm. see. The finished product, but you don't see where he was just where you was. You know what I'm saying? So if right. he's sitting up, if I'm hearing that from somebody, you know, I see that with y'all, you know, all the time. That's I say it all the time. Big motivation. I would want to be able to make sure, you know, if I I get married to someone or get engaged to someone, ain't gotta worry about shit. Mm-hmm. You good? Even if they want to pay for it, want to do whatever, you good, bro? Because you mm-hmm. with me, you're an extension of me. If I put you in that category, you good. Just like my mom good. You know what I'm saying? Just like my immediate family. Is, mm-hmm. They good. So that's the goal is to be able to be like, it's whatever. Especially if I know where your mindset is. Not talking yeah. about you just want to mess with me because I got the money yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But you you're you seen the dream, you seen the vision, and you was rocking with it. Even if I'm up. And that's what makes it kind of tougher when you are getting to that level discerning who you involve yourself with and who you share that experience with. The list starts to change. The list definitely has to change. But for those, in y'all case, she was with you when you was getting it out the mud. So Mm -hmm. it makes sense once Mariah came around, oh, I got to make sure they good. Yeah. She had held you down when, you know, things were were struck uh, tough. Mm -hmm. She was taking care of the kids while you was, you know what I'm saying, at work. You feel me? So at the end of the day, it's like, it, proof is in the pudding. Same way with my dad. Like, you know, of course, if there's any situation, you're going to make sure my stepmom don't have to worry about anything. Mm-hmm. Or same thing with my mom. You make sure my mom had what she needed nice. when it came to me. And yeah, he got to work harder. My dad was driving <laughs> over two hours to pick me up every every two, uh, every two second Saturday. 
Cause, every other he, weekend. Because he knew tired. what that meant. Because he knew what that meant for my mom. Mm-hmm. He wanted to spend time with me and dealing with everything he's dealt with. So I, I'm surrounded by people who call themselves men and move that way. So Yeah, and and bro, that's powerful. And I mean, uh, man, yeah. how, do you, how do you unpack that? Um, the the quote that stuck out to me is you're not a real man if you make excuses. Yeah, bro, we ain't got we can't like I don't know if if <laughs> that's my I Sheesh. I don't like the word hate, but I hate complainers. Like I hate people who complain and and just it's a difference between complaining and venting. Mm-hmm. You know, venting to get things off is one thing, but complaining obnoxiously is another. But um. I feel like every man wants to, should want a man up to protect and provide Mm -hmm. for their household. Mm -hmm. I mean, what he said, I understand the guy making 14 an hour where he's saying like, yeah, his his woman still loves him, cooks, clean, all that, take care of the kids and go to work. I understand that. Like you you have to have, it depends on the woman that you're with. Like you have to have a woman who understands the goal. Yeah. Like if like, and I can only speak for my situation. So I'll, I'll just come from my situation mm-hmm. and how that relates to their conversation. When me and Nisha had got together, we were very young, like, and we had a child young, and I knew when we had a child and when we got married and moved in together, I wanted to provide for my family. I didn't have the finances to provide by myself. We both work, we both, but the thing is, we were both a team at home. Mm-hmm. So she was cooking more. I would cook when I could, maybe breakfast or something like that. But she <laughs> she was the heavy cooker. I took care of the kid just as much, help with the clothes. We were a team. Mm-hmm. I didn't want her to be left with the burden of the house, Yeah, going to work, paying bills with me. And I just work and come home and expect everything to be yeah, done yeah, yeah, yeah. when you have to go to work too. Yeah. I understand how that can be physically and also mentally draining on a woman. Mm-hmm. So I was like, man, I want to provide for my family. Like I wanted to be where she don't necessarily have to work or not work. She could choose what it is that she want to put her time into. Mm-hmm. I think that's the part we missing. Like mm-hmm. it ain't about what we want them to do. What do you what would you like to do? Because some women love working. Some yep. women have professions where they love, love their, job, yeah. their job. They love their profession. So who are you to tell somebody, oh hey, 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 you take care of the kids? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I want you to be able to decide what you want, but I want it to be a decision that you don't have to make based off of financial yeah, issues. Yeah. Um, and everybody isn't there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this is to the people that be watching. Because some people say little things like when we make certain comments, they be like, oh, well. You saying that because you 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 got it or whoop to whoop like bro, that's besides the fact a thousand percent. I don't dwell. I'm the type of person if you know me and if you even been on this channel or anything, I don't. I'm not a person for stuff. Like I'll get something because I wanted it. Mm-hmm. I don't sit there and oh man, ooh, bro. If I want something, I'm gonna just try to get it. If I can't get it, I don't lose up. Yeah, pinch of sleep. Yeah. Because it's just a thing. And that's something that I teach my kids. It's like, fam, stuff is stuff. I had bought my wife, Nisha, a Mercedes, a very nice looking Mercedes. And she said she had wanted. She had always wanted it. And those were just one of the things I just wanted to do. It was just on my bucket list. It was like, yeah. I want to take care of my wife. Uh, of She's course. been doing her thing. This was my first time being able to actually do something dope like that. Yeah. And and we never captured the moment. I know some people, you know, probably seen it and, you know, but we never, I didn't do the whole roll up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a bow on top. We did a whole moment and only she was able to see it. And it, it wasn't, I didn't do it or not do it for so, it wasn't, I was nowhere in that space. Yeah. Only person I cared about how they reacted to it was her. Yeah. And she ended up getting into an accident, uh, a situation in the car, not a, a you know, yeah. injury prone incident or anything. Um, and the car was totaled. And one thing I told my children was like, you see that? See that car? Everybody used to compliment your mom on and all, and all that. Where is it now? It's not here. We can't invest in things so much to where that's our life yeah. because it's a material object. 
And I'm saying that because you have to find somebody who is understanding of where you're trying to go, yeah. where you're trying to be at. Mm-hmm. Nisha worked with me just as much as I worked while we was trying to get to, you know, a comfortable life. Yeah. And even still having goals to get somewhere because I don't find myself nearly where I would want to be. Mm-mm. But I am closer to where I want to be at peace because that's more important than a 15,000 square foot home yeah. and a Bentley over here yeah. and a Rolls Royce here, the Porsche that, comfortable. I, that I want. Comfortable. All that is cool, fam. But I know one thing, that shit never satisfies you. It does not satisfy the spirit. You could get a new car, and next year they're going to put some shit in it that you don't have, mm-hmm. and you're going to be like, hmm, that 2024 look dope. You go and get that shit, and in 2025 they're going to put some more shit that the 2024 don't have. Yeah. And you're going to say, hmm, that shit look dope. Man. It's never going to satisfy. Things are going to always increase, get better, as long as time exists and goes on. So if you invest into things in the aspect of, oh, I make six figures or I make seven figures or I'm making 45K a year because the average person is making around 40K, Mm -hmm. 35, 50, 60K. Fam, if you with somebody, and again, that depends on what y'all got going on. If you're one of them people that's like, man, I want want a woman that whoop-de-whoop and whoop-de-whoop. All right, what kind of woman is that and what kind of man do she she want? Yeah. Cause she might want a man who can make it to where when she pregnant, she don't necessarily gotta worry about the finances. We we that ego thing do, and I know I'm kind of going all over the place, but ego does play a part on our behalf big because we don't expect women to have standards for when shit get tough. Mm-hmm. Like when they're having a the baby, I've always wanted to wear where, hey, Nisha don't work. Yeah. It wasn't like that all the time. But with every kid we got, it was that much better Mm -hmm. and it was just like got it to where i always wanted to be Mm -hmm. when you having a child you should just be focusing on that because you're already one foot in and out in life Mm -hmm. when you're birthing the child so i don't want you stressing about bills and all that but we've been there Mm -hmm. so i'll never tell nobody talk like i've never been in that state yeah but if you can wait if you can focus on getting your life together this is where i'm gonna end it if you can focus on getting your life together and, and and having things ready for what you want to say, because you'll never really yeah. be ready. Mm-hmm. Having things prepared as best as you can, take that route. Yeah. Like, try to get your money up first. Stop yeah. focusing on women. When you're young, we so much into trying to figure out what the women and the ruby roses and the ice spices, we we so hooked on looks and just getting with women, we not realizing, bro, I need, this is the time to be focusing on me. Mm-hmm. From 20 to 30-something, I need to be focusing on where I'm trying to be. Because mm-hmm. if I bring somebody into this world, I want to be able to bring them to this world not struggling. Yeah. I don't like when people are okay bringing kids into a struggle. Yeah. Even when I was having children, the first time when we had Mariah, and it brings it full circle, her being 10 does nothing but just give me, it, it's like I just did this. Because I used to have her, and when I was struggling, she never understood a struggle. Yeah. But I was like, I'm working my ass off. When I had her, I'm like, bro, you're not growing up struggling. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what I got to do. I was selling t-shirts. I was doing photography. I learned businesses. I learned trades while working. Because I wasn't finna sit here and let her struggle. (laughs) And then look at her now. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and just, you got to thank God for, you know, Mm -hmm. and whatever higher being you guys believe in. The spirit is, is like giving you the motivation, whatever it is to keep going and to keep fighting after it because at the end of the day, like they are going to see and want to relate their partner to what they grow up on or mm-hmm. what they seen. Sometimes you get them one-offs, but children are going to go based off of what they were raised on for mm-hmm. the most part, what their surrounding is, what their community is. Mm-hmm. If their community is a struggle, they're going to be prone to a struggle, just like we was prone to a struggle. Mm-hmm. Until you grow up, you like, oh, it's actually nice on this side of town. Mm-hmm. You actually can go over here. Oh, you actually don't have to duck when you go to this food spot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You start realizing, like, ah, it's better things in the world. Traveling, playing, mm-hmm. sounded like a uh, soldier boy. <laughs> what is that? I'm over here in the mountains, and you start to experience yeah. things. Just the trip that we took in high school. That was the first time I took the plane and being out the hood, for real, outside of Louisiana. But 
Mm-hmm. You go over there and you see mountains and shit you ain't never seen before. And you're like, bro, what? Yeah. There's other parts of life? You know what I'm saying? So I, just to, in, in short, like, bro, everybody's story is different. Yeah. Make your story up based off of who you want to be with. But I have never met a person, not one person, that told me they'd rather struggle than be good. Yeah. yeah. So if you have the option before you didn't have kids and marry someone or before you meet a young lady, Try to make sure you up first. Yeah. Because as a man, you are supposed to protect and provide. Yeah. I don't give a damn if you're making fourteen dollars an hour. It ain't about the amount. It's about making sure you're the one that's trying to provide for your family. Yep. And protect your family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Simple as that. Man. I can go on and on. We could do a continuation <laughs> of that in the next episode because I think that it was really is way more to touch on in that conversation because a lot of people con- confuse the the the. Head of household, uh-huh. you know, mm-hmm. notion. Yeah, that's an argument now. Head of household mm-hmm. notion, pay. Yeah, women like we 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 argue about a lot of things that we should just be focusing on ourselves. Yep. If I know I'm not where I need to be, I'm not even worried about you. <laughs> yeah, facts. Let me get where I need to be. Yeah, then me and you can have that conversation. Oh, where you like to eat? It? Oh, you don't cheat. Oh shit, you ain't for me. <laughs> yeah, simple. But when you're struggling and then you find somebody who's done well with their life. And you mad because they don't want to entertain you because you're not on their level? Why? Yeah. She want to make sure you add value to her life just as much as you want her to add value to yours. Facts. Fair. It has to be fair. Fair. But, fair, fair. Man, we we st- we start podding now. We're gonna have to get. We're gonna have to get. Um. <laughs> we're gonna get in our bag next pod. Mm-hmm, but I do sure. have a question real quick before we leave. I think I got a couple minutes. You mind if I see your phone real quick? Yeah, I got to lighten the mood. Go ahead. Let me see. Right. I just want to. I just for the for the people. So childish. Gotcha. No case either. Mm. Bear guy, bro. So you got you gave me a lot of little lip. I didn't give you no look. I just just, about. I was look at him. We got the upgrade. Yeah, man. It was nice. My guy here got the fifteen, bro. That's crazy. Here we go. I just had to mention. I ain't gonna go crazy on it, but I just it's dope. No, it's like it, don't you? Yeah, man. Pretty it's, cool, it's, huh? It's a, it's a nice phone. It's, mm. It was about time. God. Oh, now it's about time. It was about time. I was trying to hold out as long as I could, man. Yeah, all that. Oh, I got. The, mm, I, I did. I, yeah, I did have the 12 Pro, man. Mm. I, I think that was like out. two days after that pod or <laughs> the next day? It wasn't the next okay. day. Bro. It was, it was kind of, it felt like the next day. <laughs> it was, Right after that pod, when he was talking all that trash I about me getting a new phone. I wasn't talking trash. I was just like, damn, man. Okay, I see. Let's be nice. Ah, bro, don't do that. Mm. Don't do that, man. Uh, don't you gotta do say that, no. <laughs> All I'm saying is, it's, it's a nice phone, man. Yeah, things you gotta upgrade. You oh, gotta, you oh, gotta. You hear that? When you things upgrade. are starting to slow down, you gotta right. upgrade. Sometimes you feel me? Mm, okay. And I, it was a time for an upgrade. I held out as long as I possibly could. Oh, okay. I tried. I got you. I tried, man. That's oh. all that matters. Is yeah. I tried. He tried. I did. Now we supposed to sit here and you know be cool <laughs> with him trying. Yeah, you know I tried, man. It's, it's, don't yeah. do that, man. Y'all been had it. You know what I'm saying? I no, just I mean, got bro, it. it was literally like a week. It wasn't, <laughs> y'all, y'all wasn't really long it, at all. Man. I'm just I'm I'm new to the I'm new to the crew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, hear you. I am. I'm new to the crew. <laughs> Oh, this nigga here, bro. I'm, I'm just saying, man. Anywho, uh, that's your song. I'm going out on that song, because, you know, you have to upgrade, right? Sometimes you got to upgrade, right? Yeah, man. Sometimes you got to upgrade. All right. Well, if y'all enjoyed the pod, man, Nisha, <laughs> Nisha left us. Um, hopefully y'all did. Make sure mm-hmm. you want to like, subscribe. Let us know more conversations that y'all want us to touch on, man. Uh, we don't want to really just be wanting to get into hot topics and stuff all the time, but I do love when we're able to dive deep into some of these um, conversations, you mm-hmm. know, and these thoughts. And again, I'm a deep thinker, so half the thoughts I be having, I don't be wanting to say because I'm yeah. like, man, they gonna be like, man, where you came come come from with that? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm always seeing things in an open minded yeah. way, you know what I'm saying? Because not only are you raised to think a certain way, but when you grow up to kind of get more information, you start to have questions. And you know, it's not that you're not believing, but you also want to kind of be able to be open to the field to say, okay, these mm-hmm. are billions of people on Earth. Everybody don't think the same. How do we all dive into one? How do we open up into accept other people's way of thinking? Because I think if we accept more things from different people in different cultures, that's how we advance mm-hmm. as humanity. But for sure, that's my little recipe. But if y'all enjoyed the yard, know what to do, man. Continue to spread love, be love. You know how we gonna go out. Um.
upgrade me. It's higher than number one. How you gonna upgrade somebody who hired than number one? No, I-